Crystal Wade here with Let's Wade In. So glad you could join us today. We've been talking about the costly gifts that have been given for your special generation. And this next costly gift is another freedom. And this freedom, when you first hear it, you may not feel too excited. But stay with me and you'll understand why it's a costly gift. This costly gift is the freedom in education. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Ah, school is not my favorite thing. I don't want to go. Whatever you may be saying. Some of you may like school. Some don't. And that's, that's understandable. But education is actually best received in our childhood, our, our tween years, and our teen years, so that we can be prepared to enter adulthood more prepared to do the missions that the Father has given us to do as we are His sons and daughters on this earth. We have to be able to read, we have to be able to write, we have to be able to do math, and so education is very important. Now, the reason why this is such a costly gift, let me scroll back through time here and take you back to colonial days in America. And in colonial days, there would be a one room little red schoolhouse. And in the schoolhouse, there would be a teacher with all of the grades in one room. And that would work pretty well. But what was difficult was the school books. There might be one, two or three school books for all of the grades. And that's very difficult because, as you know, somebody that's in kindergarten is going to need to learn different things than somebody who's in junior high or high school. And so the lack of school books was a very hard thing in colonial America, even though the people were trying to educate their children. And so there was a young man that came on the scene, and he had grown up on a farm here in America, and he loved to learn, and he personally had known what it was like to want to know more with his skill of reading and to not be able to get books. And so that had made an impression on him and he grew up and he went to college and his father actually sold the farm to pay for him to go to college. And so he really wanted to take what was given to him from his parents and build it bigger. And he did. He became a teacher in one of these one room schoolhouses. And as he was there with all of the students, uh, kindergarten through high school, he realized we have to have more books here. And so he began work on the blue backed speller. And in this, this uh, blue backed speller, it's a tongue twister, he put interesting facts about the world and he would put capitals of different nations and different facts about them so that the children, teens and tweens, could learn about things outside of their farm life and outside of their, their one room schoolhouse and their nation. And so he was expanding them. And as he began working on that, another idea came to his mind, and that was there was no dictionary. Now, if you've ever heard your mom say when you don't know how a word is spelled, hey, go look it up in the dictionary, you might have been a little bit eh, not too happy about that. But think about what if there was no dictionary? What if there was no dictionary? How could you check the spelling? How could you find out about words? How could you communicate better? Well, it was, it was more difficult. And so this young man, as, as he was teaching and then going into his adult years, said, let's take this and build it bigger. Let's form a dictionary. And do you know what he did? This is a costly gift. For 20 years, he worked on this dictionary project, and he studied 20 different languages. 20 years, 20 languages, and then he formed the Webster's Dictionary. So you have already heard of him. His name is Noah Webster, and he has given us a very costly gift, which is variety and knowledge in our education. And that's not the only costly gift that has been given in education. For many years, Children, teens, and tweens worked with their families on the farms, and you just had to work together in order to get the job done, to get the harvest in, to get the food prepared for the winter. It just took all hands on deck. Everybody had to work. And so that was life. And 
people pretty much accepted it. And then, uh, then came the industrial revolution and people were moving into the cities to get jobs. And in these cities, guess what? The families still needed help. And so children were getting jobs in factories, very young children. And in the factories, the conditions were bad. The pay was low and it was a difficult time for children whose best time children, tweens and teens in those years of growing up to be able to learn how to read, write, do arithmetic, learn about science, learn about those things in those years in order to prepare for adulthood. And if those years, they don't get the education in those years, their adulthood is going to be hampered. It's going to be hindered. The, it's trouble comes in adulthood when the education years are not used for education years. And that is what happened to these children, tweens and teens that were working very hard to help their families in these factories. And so there were some people at the reformers actually, and they were like, this is not right. These children, tweens and teens need to be in getting education in these years and not working so hard in these factories. And basically, uh, losing their future because they had not had the education during those years. And so from 1902 to the late 1930s, so 30 years, 30 years, these reformers worked to change the laws so that children, tweens and teens, could get an education in those years and not be working in the factories and in, in other in child labor situations. And so the freedom of education, the freedom for education has actually come with a very high and costly price. And it has been given freely for your generation. And the reason is yours is a very special generation. Okay, so there are more costly gifts that you have been given. Stay tuned. Remember, go with God and go for the gold.